And bunch of questions tell me where you at your motivation guy is back. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Guys, if you guys want to bring your gameplay to the next level, this competitive season, you guys need to take a few steps back and learn from the mistakes that you're consistently making. And that's why today, we're going to be going over the biggest mistakes you're most likely making in Fortnite Chapter 3, Season 2, as well as how to fix them. So, before we get into that, it's time to get my favorite candy, yo. What is that? It's that bunch of crunch, yo. And let's get this going. All right, so the first mistake we have for you guys today is like one that probably you probably wouldn't expect. You know, whenever a brand new season drops, most players think that ditching creative and focusing all of their time into arena and scrims is what's going to help them be successful. While you definitely do want to be playing real matches with the new loot pool, taking too much time away from practicing creative will actually hurt you. See, you know, creative is a place where you can get unlimited rapid pace fighting practice instead of just having to loot up for 10 minutes, take a couple of fights and then head back to the lobby where you can restart the same process over and over again. Creative allows you to get realistic fighting practice in a handful of modes with whatever new weapons that you want to get the hang of. And so even though this season is still very new, you still see your favorite pro player just spending a good chunk of their time in creative to really hone their fighting skills. All right, so speaking of pro players, make sure to head over to ProGuys.com. I could explain why, but instead, I'll leave that one to Fortnite's best pros, Benji Fishy. Yo, what's up, boys and girls? This is Benji. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you and hopefully teach you guys a lot about competitive Fortnite. I'm always getting questions about how to improve competitive Fortnite, so I've decided to a 14-day boot camp teaching you the things I feel like players struggle with the most. By the end of our time together, you're going to leave a better Fortnite player, not only a more confident, smart and consistent player, but someone who can become a better teammate for the seasons to come. Super excited about the opportunity to connect with all of you and help you reach your true potential. I'll see you guys soon. All right, so don't get it twisted. We're not saying that you need to spend all of your time in creative so you can just become the best fighter. You simply just don't want to neglect practicing in creative in order to make more room for arena in your schedule. A healthy mix of creative and real matches is what's going to really help you guys shine as a player this new season. All right, so speaking of creative, the warm-up routine that you're gonna follow each and every day is gonna have a huge impact on your success as a player. You know, your warm-up routine should be designed to not only get your blood pumping and fingers loose, it should also be helping you guys improve your mechanics and aim. You know, the average player's warm-up routine is gonna usually consist of some brief 1v1s and maybe an edit course. And so while these are good things to practice, your warm-up routine can really be much more optimal than this. Like before you touch any type of fighting mode, guys, you need to start by just getting some aim training in. Aim training is something many players are gonna tend to avoid, but with the spray meta being so prominent, you need to make sure that your aim is the best it can be to be successful in this season. Not only that, it's gonna be training your aim is gonna help you guys get really loose and really be more accurate. I mean, it's also gonna improve your mechanics. The more control you get over your sensitivity, the easier it's gonna be for you guys to have the proper crosshair placement and micro movements. And something that you need to have down in order to be consistent with building and editing. So we recommend that you start by just hopping into a map like, you know, Skavat's Aim Trainer. This map is just, you know, really up to date with the new season's loot pool. And it's just a great way to practice all aspects of your aim. Once you start feeling pretty warmed up and comfortable, head on over to Raider 464's brand new aim training map. This map has 20 advanced scenarios to help you guys improve your close, medium, and long range aim. This map uses extremely realistic bots that mimic movement that you'll see in real fights. This has to be one of, if not the best aim training maps we've ever seen in Fortnite. Definitely give these maps a try. And you're gonna see your aim starting to improve in no time. Okay, so now that you have your aim on point, we recommend hopping into a blank creative island where you can free build and just practice any new moves that you're wanting to learn. The best way to improve from free building is to incorporate as many edits into your builds as you can. And so, you know, being able to really fly through edits as you build, it's gonna improve your mechanics like crazy. And it's also needed skill to really be a solid fighter. All right, so once you're finally feeling warmed up, instead of just hopping right into arena, yo, play some 1v1s or a free for all, okay? This is where you're gonna get into a quick thinking mindset as well as shaking any nerves that you might have. And so you can get your mistakes all out of the way and really learn from them so you're ready to go when it comes time for a real match. You know, obviously everybody's gonna have different amounts of time they're able to really stay on the game you know if you're a player who is somewhat limited to how long they can play feel free to hop into an arena match or just whatever mode that you plan on playing that day and if you have more time to work with it wouldn't be a bad idea to head back into a map that will help you guys improve on something you're lacking all right, so while we're talking about creative maps, I think it's time for a question of the day. Today, I wanna know like what maps have helped you improve the most, be honest. You know, post them down below to really help some other players in the comments and you know, we're definitely gonna reply to some of your responses. 
All right, look, we all know how strong the SMGs are in this current meta. You can literally get killed in less than a second if your opponent has some solid tracking aim. However, just because you can get some lucky quick kills by jumping in someone's face with an SMG, it doesn't mean that you should resolve your entire play surrounding it. Unless you have the top 1% aim, it's gonna be very difficult to land all of your shots and your opponents consistently. And so, and if you do, the more advanced player is gonna be able to counter you with a shotgun and some pretty cool piece control. So, you know, your main goal when engaging any fight should be to avoid 50-50s at absolutely all cause like even though they might put an end to your fight quicker you're gonna end up dying to players that you could have easily killed so much more often the only time that you should really be taking a 50 50 is when you already have a considerable health advantage but like you just never want to make plays like this when you're unaware of your opponent's health all right we promise you guys that you're gonna never reach the professional level in fortnite if you rely solely on 50 50s you know they're just way too inconsistent man and really should only be attempted in specific situations and so we guarantee that if you guys put the time and effort into learning proper fighting techniques Techniques, you're gonna find yourself winning many more fights than this season than you ever have. With the release of season two, we received some awesome and brand new movement mechanics. Like the tactical sprint and mantle features are something that will undoubtedly change how Fortnite is played. This tactical sprint allows you to run at nearly double the speed you normally would with only a five second recharge time. This means that you can be traveling across the map at a much quicker pace than ever before. It may take some time getting used to, you know, in order to really remember activating your tactical sprint bind whenever it's recharged, but getting it in the habit of utilizing your tactical sprint is gonna save you loads of time when looting as well as speeding up your rotations. All right, so along with the tactical sprint, we also have the new mantling mechanic. This is definitely, guys, the most interesting of the two and also holds a ton of potential for increasing the skill gap. If you haven't already seen players, you know, have been coming up with some insane new moves using this mantle. You know, we actually just recently made a video covering the new movement mechanics, especially the mantle. So go ahead and check that out on the Pro Guys YouTube channel if you guys want to take your movement game to the next level. Aside from the more unique tricks, the mantle at its core is going to save you tons of mats in the long run and make your movement cleaner especially off spawn like you know you should be using the mantle mechanic as much as you can to avoid spinning mats when you don't need to you know, ever since the mechs revolted all the way back in Chapter 1, Season 10, we haven't really seen any overpowered vehicles in the game. And so this all changed when Epic gave us the new tanks this season. And so while these things can be extremely strong, like you don't want to revolve your gameplay around getting a hold of one. Like you're going to end up just dying a lot trying to just 50-50 for it off spawn. And so even if you do manage to get one off the bat, you won't have a fighting loadout to use once you're forced to hop out of the vehicle later in the game. And so relying on a tank to really gain arena points is only going to hurt in the long run. You know, at the end of the day, guys, the entire point Point of ranking up an arena is so that you can compete in tournaments with the top players and relying on a vehicle that's likely going to be nerfed down the road anyways is not a viable strategy not to mention that's especially in solos you know players are starting to learn how to counter tanks all they need to do is just shoot the yellow box at the front of the tank and your entire upper body is revealed making you guys extremely vulnerable and likely to get killed look you know we're not saying to never use tanks you know, they could be a great option for the mid game after you have a few kills on a solid fighting loadout. You just don't wanna rely on them as your main strategy. But your question army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back, man. I'm so excited uh, to, to be doing this with you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, just really stay up to date with all the latest and greatest tips and tricks that we gotta offer, right? Also, feel free to leave a comment and just let us know if there's anything you would be interested in learning more about. Remember, the best way to improve in this game is to learn from your mistakes, you know, take a step back and just see what you can be doing better and you can. I believe in you guys. Make sure to connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.